Are you blessed, church? Amen? Are you blessed, my dear brothers and sisters? If you are blessed, can we declare by faith, I receive it, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you if you uh, have been listening from the message of the Lord this morning from our praise and worship. You know, you can run away from your problems. You can uh, run away from your debtors. You can run away from your husband and wives even perhaps. And some people... For a short time, you can run away from death even. Yeah, sometimes, if people are ill, if we, the people are dying for sometimes, the machine can prolong their life for sometimes. So temporarily, you can run away from death. But the message of the song earlier is, we cannot run away from the goodness of God. Amen? You cannot run away from the goodness of God. Even if you feel that you don't need it, even if you feel that you don't like it, the goodness of God will be there. Amen, church? So, um, we are blessed. I receive it, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Um, can I ask each and every one of us to uh, stand up? So, we welcome the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord can be found in 1st John chapter A 1st uh, John verse 1 1st John chapter 1 verse 8 until chapter 2 verse 2 The word of the Lord says If we claim to be without a sin then we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make Him out to be a liar, and His word has no place in our lives. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our behalf, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. Thank you, Lord, for reading your word. Let us pray. Indeed, Father, your goodness is running after us. Indeed, Father, that we cannot run away from your goodness and graces. And we thank you so much, Lord, for that wonderful presence. Lord, our prayer is, as we continue in our worship this afternoon, may you continuously be with us. Our Lord, Holy Spirit, we invite your presence in your company to be our teacher, to be our speaker this afternoon. Lord, your servant continues to humble himself in your presence. I continue to acknowledge, Father, that apart from you, I can do nothing. Lord, make me a mouthpiece, make me a servant, hide me behind you, Father God. And Lord, I just entrust these very words unto you. Give life upon it, that it may serve your people, all the hearers, Father God. And Lord, may it accomplish in the life of each and every one the message, the word that you want to impart for all of us to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, again, if you were listening to the theme of our praise and worship this afternoon, 
It's not a secret that it's about forgiveness. Amen? It is about forgiveness. And it is a message today that all of us can relate into. I believe that this message about forgiveness is something that all of us can relate into. Amen, church? I believe that the topic of forgiveness is something that all of us is qualified to hear. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters? And siguro, maybe I just want to start with the question that what does a man do? What does a man need to do in order to receive or in order to qualify for the forgiveness of God? What do you, my dear brothers and sisters, or what do I need to do in order to receive the forgiveness of God? In order to qualify for the forgiveness of God, what do I need to do? Confess. 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 Amen? What else did you say? Repent. But my dear humble, but my dear brothers and sisters, in order for you to qualify for the forgiveness of God, you must first sin. Amen? You must first sin. No? <laughs> it's not a trick question. Amen? In order for one to receive the forgiveness of God, in order for one to qualify for the forgiveness of God, you must first sin. Amen, church? And the word that we have read today, it says in there that we are all sinners. Amen. If we claim to be without no sin, then we deceive ourselves and the truth of the Lord is not in us. Romans 3.23, it says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, face the mirror and tell the person in the mirror and tell him or her, you are a sinner. Because that's what the Word of God tells us. All of us have sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. Amen. So with that, I don't think that there is a disagreement in here. With that, we are all qualified with the topic of forgiveness. Amen. Because we are all sinners. Amen, church. We are all qualified for the topic of forgiveness. Amen. Therefore, Lord, I qualify for the topic of forgiveness. Father God, give me the attention for the next few minutes so that I may learn and hear your words. Amen, church. Most Christians, or hopefully all Christians, I'm sure, certainly in Sior, we know that the forgiveness that we have received from the Lord is also as a, only a result of His grace in mercy. Amen, church? The forgiveness that we receive from the Lord is only as a result of His grace and mercy. Amen, church? We do not deserve it. Amen? We do not deserve that forgiveness. We cannot earn that forgiveness. Amen, church? We do not deserve the forgiveness of God. We cannot earn the forgiveness of God. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, in fact, you know, in this world, as the things become more expensive, they become more rare. Amen. Amen, church. As things become more expensive, they become rare. If you look at metal, yeah, you, there's a lot of metal. How much is metal in the Philippines? If I remember, it's right, three pesos per kilo. And as the material becomes more expensive, it will become rare. 
metal, it becomes bronze, it becomes silver, it becomes gold, it becomes diamond. Amen. And as it becomes more expensive, it becomes more rare. Platinum and other rare material. But my dear brothers and sisters, there is a thing that is the most expensive, but there is substantial. And that is the forgiveness of God. Hebrews 9.22, it says in there, without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness. Amen. In order for forgiveness to become available, our Lord Jesus Christ has to send His Son into the world. Jesus Christ has to suffer, has to die, has to shed His blood in order for that forgiveness to become available. Amen, church? Is there more expensive? Is there more precious than the forgiveness of sins? It is paid by the blood of God itself through Jesus Christ. Amen, church? So, when we talk about forgiveness, it is very pricey, but it is substantial. It is more than enough. Amen, church? Amen? Are you with me? Amen, church? So, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus has already paid for our forgiveness through His blood. Amen. That's the reason why that we know that our forgiveness is unmerited. We do not deserve it. It is only through grace and mercy. Our forgiveness, we cannot earn it. Jesus earned it for us. Amen. But most importantly, you know what is the most important about forgiveness? The Lord would not withhold it. The Lord would not withhold it. Hindi ipagkakait ng Panginoon sa iyo ang kanyang pagpapatawad. Amen, church. The Lord will not and will never withhold it. It says in the verse that we have read, my dear brothers and sisters, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And in verse 8, it says in here, If we claim to be without no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But the most important is in verse 9, it says in here, in verse 9, it tells us that if we confess our sins, this is where you have said confess, repent, Amen. If we confess our sins, He is faithful in just to forgive us our sins. Amen. He will not only forgive us our sins, but it says in there, He will purify us from all unrighteousness. When the Lord forgives sins, He did not just say, okay, I will not remember your sin no more. It is more than that. The Lord even says that, for my name's sake, I even am willing to blot out your sins. There is a big difference, my dear brothers and sisters. When you come to someone, and that someone says, let us forget about that. In the deathbed of that someone, he will remember everything, including the thing that you said, forget about it. But when the Lord says, even I, I will blot out, parang walang nangyari, as if no entry has been inputted. Amen, church. That's how the Lord forgives. And glory to God in the highest because we are all in agreement that we have all sinned. 
We are all in agreement that we have all sinned. And because we have all sinned, we require the forgiveness of God. Amen, church? And the good thing in here, my dear brothers and sisters, is it says in there that the moment that we come and confess our sins, the Lord does not withhold. He is just and faithful to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. You know your hard-earned pounds, your hard-earned money, it's your money already because you earned it. It's in your money already because it is in the bank already. Amen. But if you pay someone, if you send money to someone, the bank will say, we need some time for clearance. Amen. Amen. Isn't it, yeah? If you send money to someone, the bank will say, it may take few hours for clearance. When in fact, you are already earned that money. It's already sitting in your bank. But still, they will impose clearance. But you know, when you come to the Lord, with confession, with humbleness and humility, just in there that the Lord is just and faithful to forgive us our sins. The Lord will not tell you, come back next week and I will think about it. The Lord will not t tell you, I am busy with someone. Wait for your turn. Wait for the clearance. You know that man in the cross? <laughs> we know that after... That man in the cross talked to the Lord Jesus Christ. He did not have much time. Amen, church. He did not have much time. Jesus did not told him, you know, we are in predicament here. Why don't you wait till we both come down and we'll talk? No. People who are in their deathbed, who have a parents in here, who have a loved one in here. It's good that we don't have a husband and wife who gone ahead of us. E may mga kapatid tayo. Who their husband has gone ahead of them. Would it be acceptable if you think that in our loved one's deathbed and they come to the Lord and they ask the Lord and the Lord will say, Hang on, I'm busy for the next two, three minutes. My dear brothers and sisters, the moment that we humble down ourselves and we confess our sins to the Lord, it says in there, the Lord is so just and faithful to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen, church. Amen. By all means, bilang isang Kristiyano, as a Christian, it says in there in verse chapter 2, verse 1, as a Christian, the Lord do not want us to sin. It says in there, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. Once you become a Christian, or even if you are not a Christian, the Lord does not want us to sin. Amen. Amen. Whether you are a Christian or not, the Lord does not want you to sin. Because sin separates us from God. Sin put an enmity, distance, separation between us and God. Amen, church. By all means, God does not want us to sin. Amen? That's the reason why that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, and that preceding verse, it talks about the armor of God. What did the Lord say? Put on the full armor of God so that you can withstand the scheme of the enemy. Amen, church? 
So that as a Christian, we put on the full armor of God so that as a Christian, we can fend off the scheme of the enemy that will lead us to sin. Amen, church? That's the reason why. That the Lord is telling us that you put on the full armor of God so that you will not sin. James chapter 4 verse 7, it says in here that run away from evil. Run away from temptation. Resist the evil and the evil will flee from you. Amen, church? That's why we are being taught to resist sin. And sin will run away from us. Amen, church? That's why Romans 12, 2 is there. That says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen? All of those are in there. That's the reason why in the chapter 2, verse 1, it says in there, the Lord does not want you to sin. Amen. But understand the preceding verse. But if anybody does sin, Amen church. But if anybody does sin, it says in here, we have an advocate. Amen church. If anybody does sin, it says in here, we have an advocate in Christ Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, does anyone of us, is there anyone in here raring, enjoying to go to the court of law and stand in the front of the judge? No one. Amen, church. Gugustuhin mo ba na humarap sa judge being accused of something? No. But once you have committed a crime and you are being accused in the front of the judge, you have only one choice. Contact Albert. Albert, I need your service. You need a lawyer to take you to stand in front of the judge. Amen, church? The same with these very words. This very word says that the Lord does not want you and me to sin. Amen, church. The Lord does not want us to sin. But if you do sin, do we understand? Ayaw ng Panginoon na magkasala tayo. But the moment na nagkasala ka, the Lord even, my dear brothers and sisters, Amen. The Lord even through Paul, it says in there that do not let the grace of God to be your ticket into sinning. Amen. Do not even let the grace of God to cause you into a repetitive sinning. If I'm not mistaken, it's in Romans 6 or 16. Just help out later on. When the Lord, when the word in there, it says there, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace will be increased? By no means, Apostle Paul said no. Amen, church. So the Lord does not want you and me nor anyone to sin. But it says in there, if you do sin, there is only one remedy. And that is through our advocate. That is true, Jesus Christ. Amen, church. The righteous one. The one who paid for, the one who made forgiveness possible by paying it off with his blood. Therefore, fulfilling Hebrews 9.22. Amen, church. Are you with me, my dear brothers and sisters? Amen. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ was trying to explain to um, uh, Peter. You remember when uh, before the Last Supper, when they were in that upper room, 
my dear brothers and sisters, that Jesus Christ took some basin, took some water, took a towel, and Jesus Christ sat down at the feet of the disciples and began washing their feet. Amen? That happens during the same night as the Last Supper where Jesus Christ sat down and began washing the feet of the disciples. And what did Apostle Peter say? Lord, no, 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 by all means, don't wash my feet. Don't wash my feet, don't wash my feet. And what did Jesus say? Unless I wash my, your feet, you have no part of me. Amen. That's discipleship. And Apostle Paul Peter immediately said, If that's the case, Lord, then wash my head and wash my hands and wash my body as well. Amen. Amen. And this is where the Lord Jesus Christ said that no, someone who already had a bath, someone who already were cleaned, does not need to have a bath again, but you must have to wash your feet. Meaning, my dear brothers and sisters, coming to the Lord in repentance is one-off. If you repent to the Lord, if you surrender your life to the Lord, that is a one-off asking for the Lord's forgiveness. Amen, church? You submit your life to the Lord. And even how good you walk with the Lord, so as long as you are living in this flesh, so as long as you are living in this fallen world, in this corruptible world, my dear brothers and sisters, we are all liable of the sins that is happening in this world. Amen. It's not intentional. You go to Facebook and you can see anything and everything in there that as a Christian you should not be seeing. But you are in Facebook. What can you do? That's the reason why the time and time again. Amen, church. It's not intentional. You are waking up one morning and you hear the neighbor cursing and shouting with one another. It's not intentional, but you were in that place. Exposed. That is the reason why that the Lord said that someone who had a bath does not have to have a bath again. But it is proper for us to have our feet be washed. Amen, church? That's the reason why that the Lord Jesus Christ taught us the model prayer. In that model prayer, there is always that element that, Lord, forgive us our sins. Amen, church? Amen, church? Amen. Do we all agree? Amen. Amen? Do we all understand the concept of forgiveness? Amen? The question, are we all happy on that concept? Amen, church? It's very simple. We are all sinners, and as a sinner, we have no hope without forgiveness. Amen, church? Diba? And when we talk about forgiveness, it is amazing. Diba? It is amazing because all of us are in need of forgiveness. Amen, church? But it becomes tricky. You know, forgiveness in theory is amazing, awesome, but it becomes tricky if we are now the one releasing forgiveness. Amen. Diba? You smile, but it's the reality. Amen, church. Napakagandang. It is very good to hear forgiveness. It is, oh yeah, it is amazing to hear forgiveness because I am a sinner. I do not deserve it. I am the worst sinner in there and the Lord has forgiven me. Amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But it becomes difficult 
if we are now the one needing to release forgiveness. Isn't that true? Amen, church. Isn't that true? So hopefully we can learn from the Lord. Amen, church. Forgiven people should be forgiving people. Amen, church. Amen. There is a saying that says, anyone who comes to ask must know how to give as well. Amen, church. Amen. Anyone who asks must know how to give as well. Amen. A forgiven people should be forgiving people. Amen. Amen. We have received the forgiveness of God. Anyone in here who received the forgiveness of God? So therefore, we must also release forgiveness to others. Amen, church. Especially to those people who wronged us. Amen. Especially those people who wronged us. Yes, we may be the greatest Christian ever live, but don't forget that we are living in the fallen world. We are living in a corruptible world. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, every day there will be frustration. Every day there will be hurt. Every day there will be upset. Amen, church? We all felt upset. Sino pong hindi na upset dito sa kanilang buhay? Amen. All of us in our life were upset. Amen. Amen. And also, all of us in our life have upset others. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, that's the reality because we are living in a fallen world. We are living in a world where the enemy, the devil, is the prince. My dear brothers and sisters, and as you and me, as a Christian being, that's why it says, we are the salt and light to this fallen world. We are the salt and light to this darkened world. Amen, church. Not only salt and light by being uprightly, not only salt and light by being righteously, not only salt and light by uh, being hindi ka makatapak ng langgam, but also in forgiveness. A forgiven people should be a forgiving people. Amen, church. And it's my encouragement, it is my challenge that in this church, within us, see your family, that we must learn how to repent, we must learn how to say sorry, and we must also learn how to release forgiveness. Amen, church. Amen. That is the full cycle of forgiveness that the Lord taught us. Amen. That is the full cycle of forgiveness that the Lord taught us. All of us are, are sinners. If we claim to be without no sin, then the truth is not in us. And how do you enter that cycle of forgiveness? You repent, you say sorry, and however that sins that you have committed, the Lord forgave you. And once the Lord forgave you, my dear brothers and sisters, however damaged that relationship is, it's restored. Amen. Amen. 
That's the greatest love story ever told. However your sin is, your sin separate you from God. Amen. The more a sinner you are, the more separated you are from God. Amen, church. The more a sinner you are, the more fractured your relationship is with God. Amen, church. But the moment that you repent and you confess in the Lord, the Lord did not weigh up how big your sin is. He forgave you. And that fractured, broken relationship has been restored. Amen, church. That is the full cycle of forgiveness. That's the reason why that I pray that in this church, we must learn how to say sorry and we must learn how to release forgiveness. Amen, church. Amen. To be honest, my dear brothers and sisters, if you are the offended party, if you are the offended party, it is in your best interest to release forgiveness. Even others are asking for it. Even before others will ask for it. Even before others will say sorry. It is your best interest to release forgiveness because you are doing it for yourself. Because you know that you are forgiven and because you are forgiven, you must first release forgiveness. But the difference, my dear brothers and sisters, is it does not complete the cycle of forgiveness. Diba doon, that's where what happened when the cycle of forgiveness is not completed. Because the other person, he thought that there is nothing wrong, so there is, is not coming to ask for your forgiveness. But you yourself, you release forgiveness. But in order for that cycle of forgiveness to be complete, in order for that relationship to be restored, both parties must act. Amen, church? And that is the type of forgiveness that the Lord is commanding us to do. So, both parties have something to learn. Amen, church? Forgiven people should be forgiving people. Amen. Some might say that, oh, Hector, hang on, hang on. You have no idea how much I was hurt. You have no idea how much I have suffered. You have no idea that as a young, I suffered until growing up. You have no idea how unforgivable this sin is. And you are right. You are true. I have no idea how much one suffered. You, I have no idea how much difficulty you have gone through. But what I know is, this is what the Bible teaches us. This is the command of the Lord. Is that not good enough reason, my dear brothers and sisters? And being a Christian, this is the command of the Lord. Ito po yung gustong gawin ng Panginoon natin, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? So there is no other reason. It is the command of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, remind me, if it is a command of the Lord, it must be carried out. Amen, church? It is not dependent on us. It is the command of the Lord. Amen, church. And it says in here that if we ask God to forgive us, He forgive us. Amen, church. So that's the reason why that if others ask forgiveness as well, we should forgive others too. Colossians 3.13, it says in here, Bear with one another and forgive one another. If you have any grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgive you. Amen, church. You know, 
There is only one acceptable reason that you should not forgive. You know what is that? When the Lord did not forgive you. But like what we've said, the Lord is faithful who forgives us. Tell me a story of person in the Bible who asked the Lord's forgiveness and he was not forgiven. Is there someone in the Bible you know? Who asked the Lord's forgiveness and they were not forgiven? Anyone? I don't remember anyone in the Bible. Judas, who betrayed Jesus, had he asked for forgiveness, he would have been forgiven. Amen, church? Had Judas asked for forgiveness, he would become the greatest apostle, I believe. He would become the one who, I betrayed Jesus and I asked for his forgiveness and I was forgiven. But the thing is, Judas never asked for forgiveness. He had a remorse in him, but that remorse did not brought him to repentance. So my dear brothers and sisters, bear with one another and forgive one another. And if anyone has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Matthew chapter 18 verse 21 to 35, the parable of the unmerciful servant. We know that, that many people are called na nagkakautang, who they have a, a great debt to the king, and the king all forgiven their debts, millions in millions in millions of debt. And the servant went out and saw the other servant who uh, owes him 100, and he cannot forgive. We know that story. The Lord said, I have forgiven you of this unforgivable sin. And yet, you do not know how to release forgiveness for a tiny and small sin. And not only that, my dear brothers and sisters, unforgiveness can put a stop in our powerful prayers. Unforgiveness can put a stop in our powerful prayers. Amen. Mark 11:25 Jesus said, "And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins." May may forgive you your sins. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. A forgiven person should be a forgiving person. Amen. That is the bottom line. Amen, church. Amen. So, to reconcile us all, if we ask, ano yung formula? What is the formula of forgiveness in the scriptures? What is the formula of forgiveness in the scriptures? It's very simple. We confess our sins. We admit to our sins. We acknowledge our sins. We repent on our sins. According to the children before, they said being sorry for your sins. And God says to us, I am just and faithful to forgive you your sins. Amen, church? Amen? Amen? Let us not try to complicate it. Amen? Let us not try to complicate it. Let us not put conditions on it. Isn't it? Have you heard that? I will forgive them if they will do this, this, and that. I will forgive them if they will ask for a public apology. I will forgive them if they will do this, this, and that. My dear brothers and sisters, 
If the Lord has put a restriction in the forgiveness that we are asking maybe up until now, we are not forgiven. Amen, church. The Lord appointed us to be the salt and light of the world. The Lord appointed us to go and preach the gospel to all creation. Amen, church. Is there someone or anyone in here who has been appointed by the Lord to choose who should be forgiven or not? Let us not put restrictions, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us not be a gatekeeper for forgiveness, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. Matthew 18, 21, 22. Peter came to Jesus asking, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brothers or sisters who sinned against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 70 times seven. It does not really say that you calculate it and how, how, much, how much is that? 490. Does not say that, oh, 490, I start counting. No, it says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, every time that the opportunity comes, Forgive. Amen. You know, sometimes even yung forgiveness, sometimes even the forgiveness, you release forgiveness now, and after a week or two, you will remember the offense, and it will be painful again. Just forgive. Just release again. Amen, church. That's the reason why that it says in there that every time that there is an opportunity, release forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 4.32 Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave us. Amen, church. And I want us to reflect on this Last passage. That compassion. Compassion to one another. Forgiving one another. Just as Christ forgive us. My dear brothers and sisters. Do you remember the time when you came to the Lord and asked for his forgiveness? You were all in tears. You were all down in His presence. And you can just feel that you were forgiven because as if a boulder is lifted up on you. Amen, church. And our praise in worship alone, as you praise in worship the Lord, isn't it? Nakakagaan ng pakiramdam. The Lord was so compassionate that He allowed us to have a glimpse of His presence this afternoon. And it brings a remarkable, wonderful feeling in us. Amen, church. If you have the power or control to uh, let other people experience that, would you withhold it? Will you withhold it? No. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord has been compassionate to us and He forgave us. And what the Lord is asking from us today is, as I have been compassionate to you and I have forgiven you, pass it on. Do unto others what I have done to you. A forgiven people should be a forgiving people. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. God wants 
others to experience what we have experienced from Him. And the Lord wants you to be used as His instrument. Amen, church. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Let us stand up. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us be in the presence of the Lord. Let us enter the presence of the Lord. God, can you? In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, it says in here, Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find that grace in time of need. My dear brothers and sisters, I invite us, I encourage us to come and enter into that presence of God. We all have hurt, have wronged, have prostrate someone. And why don't we take this moment just as we receive from the Lord and say that, Lord, I release forgiveness. I release forgiveness. And why don't we say in the other hand that, Father, whoever they are that have been felt wrong by my action, by my words, by my decorum, I ask for their forgiveness. In the same way that I, your servant, stand in the presence of you in behalf of everything, in behalf of all that I have, my family, my wife, and my children. If we in any one way or another have offended you, I seek for your understanding and forgiveness. And in the same way that I receive the forgiveness of God from many, many, many innumerable faults, shortcomings, overgoings that I have done that the Lord have forgiven. Have confidence that in one way or another, I just release forgiveness. I just release forgiveness. Presently or historically, I just release forgiveness. And I think it is a good practice. My dear brothers and sisters, I encourage us all Nothing is hidden from the Lord. We cannot hide from our all-knowing God. Why don't we talk to the Lord? And first and foremost, confess our sins to the Lord. If there are still part of us, if there are still areas of our life, that we did not ask the Lord for forgiveness, this is the perfect moment to ask the Lord. It's according to the word of the Lord. If you confess your sins and your iniquities, He is just and faithful to forgive you your sins and to release you from all those unrighteousness. Can we take this moment to come clean to the Lord and say that, Lord, I take shelter in your love. I take shelter 
in your mercy and grace. Lord, I do not deserve it. I cannot in any way earn it. But Father, I'm standing in front of your mercies and grace. I'm standing in your throne, in your mercy seat. And with all humbleness in my heart, with all humility in my heart, I confess all my sins to you, O Lord. Recently and historically, Holy Spirit of the living God, search me and know me and reveal everything and all the issues in me that needs reconciling with the Father. Let's us have this moment to make an account with the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Heart to heart with your God and Father. And in the same way, why don't you tell the Lord that Lord, to all the people who have frustrated me, who have wronged me, to all the people, O oh Lord, who have left a footprint of pain in my heart from the young age until now recently or historical Father I release forgiveness I release forgiveness from that Father to that mother who were not around when I was growing up. I release forgiveness to those families and relatives that because my parents were not there that I was mistreated growing up. I release forgiveness to that husband or wife who mistreated me, who abused me, who up until this very moment have left a pain in my heart. Lord, even if they are not here, even if they are gone, but every time that I remember it, it brings a pain in my heart. Lord, I release my forgiveness. I release my forgiveness to everyone in one way or another who uh, I felt have wronged me in the current times or historically. And in the same way that Father if I have wronged someone, if I have mistreated someone, if I have left a footprint of pain in someone's life, growing up as a young up until now, historically and in the present times, Father, through you, I ask their forgiveness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you so much 
for giving us your message about forgiveness. We know, Father God, that this is one area of our daily walk, our daily life, Father, that we need to learn, that we need to excel, Father God. And Lord, we pray that those times that it will be difficult, that that conversation with Peter will be a reminder to us that we ought to forgive every given opportunity because that was the same measure that we received and accepted from you. Father God, thank you very much that we have a gracious and merciful God in you. Thank you very much, Lord. We continue to entrust and surrender and lift up everything in your name, Father God. Even as we separate and go, Lord, and continue, Lord, to dwell in this fallen world, even as we continue, Father God, in our journey in this darkened world, O Lord. Father, our prayer is that you may help us to walk in that path that leads to righteousness and life. That may we continue to wear that armor of God so that we can stand the schemes of the enemy. That we may continue to successfully fend off the presence and the impending works of the enemy. Resist the enemy and the enemy will flee from us according to your words. But most importantly, we take shelter from the blood of the Lamb. We take shelter from the blood of Jesus because without it, there is no forgiveness. My dear brothers and sisters, we receive it from the Lord. Let us have that joy in our heart to go in peace and serve the Lord and our community. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and the company of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore in Christ. Amen. Let us give the Lord the offering. Thank you, Lord. Uh, just a few announcements. I think next week is the uh, um, uh, corporate celebration. Yeah? of all the um, uh, birthday celebrant. Amen? So, uh, <laughs> 27 is the last week. Twenty-seven is ano? Uh, no, twenty-seven is the last week. Yeah. Uh, did we agree twenty-seven? Because twenty is uh, yun yung available si Ati Ani, di ba? Alternate yung ship niya. Twenty-seven. If uh, if twenty-seven is uh, kung mas maraming ano dun, then so. Um, Okay, 27 down. But siguro, if we can have, uh, if we can uh, sit down and uh, 
It would be good if we can sit down and have a meeting next week. Then I think these are the things that we can include so that meron tayong standard date. So that uh, hindi, hindi pa move, move. Amen? Okay, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you.